Yeah, I had two twin sisters that was older than me. So of course they had boyfriends. So their boyfriends was really, really, really getting money. This during the height of the crack epidemic or this is This was right before. I say a teach before. It was all about marijuana then. Back then they used to roll up little dollar jokes. And sell them. Sell little dollar jokes. This Reggie. Did oh, was it good? Was it good weed back then? Was yep, it, uh, it really was though. You know, you gotta take the seeds out and all that back then. Though. Well, you say your, your so your, your twin sisters had boyfriends who was really getting paper though, yep. and they they kind of plugged you, yep. and it went from there. It only lasts for a short length of time. Why you say only that? did that for a short length of time, and then the crack it it could then fail. Boom. Once that fell, by me hustling with the little weed, I was tied in with the neighborhood. It wasn't a lot going on, but I ain't gonna lie. From what I seen, there was always a movement to split that eight ball up. I don't know. It was just a lot going on with that. Some stuff can't be talked about, but you know. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. You say so around teen, a teenager though, you jumped off the porch and actually joined the gang, but before that you was already hustling? Yeah. I, I was hustling, but I had joined the gang early too. Well, actually, to be honest with you, when I was in elementary, I had my own gang first. I had started my own gang. What was the name of your gang? Well, then we didn't have no gang. We didn't have no name. We was young. We was just, it was a pack of us. Whenever I need them, they was always there, and I would add to it. And, so you was and a leader. It just grew. You know, it grew. You know, we was kids, we used to uh, get uh, like, say like, you know, like in Memphis we call it a ditch. But but you know, it'll be like uh, the, the sewage, the tunnel, you go down in the sewage. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about, yeah. So we used to do that, we used to go down in the sewage or whatever, we used to travel. Back then we was kids, we thought we were doing so, we had BB guns. We would get out BB guns, but we would go in the, in the sewage and we would go to different neighborhoods. And we would fight and stuff like that. And you know, so that's really how it started. Mm. Yeah. You said that's as far as the gangs with the like the hustling or like making money though. And then, you know, the hustling came when I was like in the seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yep. Yeah. Elementary was I had my own gang fight. Seventh grade, when I started I went to Merrill. Back then Merrill started off at the seventh grade. And I was seeing other teenagers my age, they weren't gang banging or nothing, but they had a lot of money. And me, at that time, me and my little gang members, when well, we had just graduated from sixth grade, we in seventh grade, we would be looking. I tell them, hey, look. And they'd be on that couch, so I said, so. Like I said, I had two twin sisters that was older than me. So of course they had boyfriends. So they boyfriends was Really, really, really get money. This during the height of the crack epidemic, or this is this was right before. I say a teach before. It was all about marijuana then. Back then, they used to roll up little dollar jokes and sell them. Sell little dollar jokes. This Reggie did that. Oh, was it good? Money. Was it good weed back then? Was yep, it, uh, it really was though. You know, you gotta take the seeds out and all that back then. Though. Well, you say your, your so your your twin sisters had boyfriends who was really getting paper though, yep. and they they kind of plugged you. Yep. And it went from there? It only lasts for a short length of time. Why you say only that? did that for a short length of time and then the crack it, it could then fail. Boom. Once that fell, by me hustling with the little weed, I was tied in with the neighborhood. So once the crack fell, you know, we stand out up under the tree. Sell rocks and stuff. Back then I was young, so you know, the OGs were Manufactured for us, you know, cook it up or whatever. Then they showed us how to do it, showed us how to cut it up. We go out there and hustle, do it ourselves. Man, you know, um, some people who are involved in their lifestyle, they talk about like how much paper they made, but it's just as many people who have experienced the downside to it, like having family members or loved ones or people they was in relationships with, or even themselves down the line, like fall victim to crack. You know what I'm saying? Did you experience that as well? Or was it always like on the positive for you as far as like making the paper? All of it is a downside. And I'm explaining to you about that. 
if you selling drugs and you making a lot of money, you living good out for it, you come addicted to their living, accustomed to it. So, you can't keep selling drugs forever and don't go to jail or don't, or don't get killed. Eventually, one of them going to come to you. So, it's hard for a person that sells drugs their whole life to stop and get a regular job. The money drop is difficult. Like me, I did it because for so long, it was all about me. But like once I got 21, I had my first daughter, loved her so much. I sat down and I looked at it. I seen all my friends going to the feds, doing 10, 15, 20 years. The rest of them get killed. But when I used to hold her, I looked at her and I said, but if I go away, where is going to leave you with? So for me, I got three kids. I would say two girls and a boy, but they grown young ladies now. But I'm very much involved in their life. I pay for their well-being. So my kids is what straight me up. I didn't want them, nothing to happen to me because I was the best thing they had. So, you know, that's how I live with Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. But um, just last, the last thing on the hustling, man, like during the, the crack, crack epidemic, they was talking about, you know, people, some people making thousands a day, other people generate millions a week and stuff like that. Like, what type of money were you and your, your clique seeing, bro? We were seeing thousands a day. Because we were so young, I think at that age, I was still kind of getting into stuff. So, I would be making money off debt, but at the time where I grew up in, I would still turn around and do a robbery or something. So, I wouldn't just really focus on that till later on. But by the times I really focused on it, I had really been through enough to see what it really do to people. So, and that's everything I do. That's just like the music I make. I know the music I make is gangster music. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I really intend eventually to do positive music and just fix everything that I did wrong, though. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, like to. And man, so, um, man, transitioning to the music. So, you, you mentioned, like, being on tour with, you know, Project Play, Squeaky, you know what I'm saying, Tom Ski Mask. Being there around a skinny, skinny, skinny pimp, A by M J G. You yeah. know we had did the song with Pastor Troy. I know Criminal Man and him did that album too. So Pastor Troy been tied in. I know yeah. Squeaky been doing a lot of uh, yeah. production for Pastor Troy. So talk about you. You working with Pastor Troy though? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I worked with Pastor Troy when Squeaky first worked with him. For real. So I was part of the Mocha the Mobster part too. Okay. When uh, Pastor Troy and Squeaky did the song, I made big money. So I rap right after Pastor Chuck. I wrote Squeaky Rap to that verse too. I mean to that song too. Uh, just putting in work. At that time on the same album, we had a song called Get Fired On, which was very hot. Uh, I made a lot of noise off that, I guess because I came in. Get wrong, get gone, push it through the crowd. Fools getting fired on. Who went by Big Seal, Golden Diamonds in my grill. So everywhere I would go, People would say that all the time for so many years. Hold on, man. You can't stop. Go ahead and spit that. Can you spit that? You remember the whole verse? Of course I do. Can you spit a little bit of well, that? Get fat on. Like, get fat on. I know I can't be. Hold on, hold on, cuz. Get wrong. Get gone. Pushing through the crowd. Fools get fired on. Who am my Big seal. Golden diamonds in my grill. Whooping niggas ass like the movie Kia Bill. But I'm quick to set you straight. Leave you with a headache. Bobbing and weaving, knocking out your whole mouth plate. Sober up, got your grill if you want to throw them things. Knocking niggas out with one punch every time that I swing. <laughs> you know, that was back in the day. So back then. <laughs> hey, I like that. I like For that. Sure. Yeah, For nah, sure. but uh, so you said Mo, Mo Cheddar Mops, you tapped in with people like Pastor Troy, but like, um, you know, I, I remember Squeaky relatively, you know what I'm saying? He started he started getting serious, you know, project players and all that. So he was around for all of that. So like how did you how did how does you or what's your earliest memory of witnessing the music really take take off? You you mentioned like okay, Orange Mound, North Memphis, but 
like citywide and then throughout the region and y'all traveling to different states like around what was the album or the song that did that well as much as i was involved we had a lot going on but even when it was taken off i still didn't see it for real I never seen it because we was always on tour uh, or I was always doing stuff in the streets. I just really never, I was always more famous than what I thought. My voice and my name was always more famous than my face. People would know my name and people would know my voice, but like it was a lot of times back then if I tell a person, come on in money. You wanna get in this jump bro? Come on in money. If you want to. But I know like like back then I would be around people and people would be like when I talk they'd be like it's like I heard your voice before. But when I tell them I'm big C they'd be like, No, that ain't you. Hey, you don't tell me that ain't me. So it was like I was bigger than me. So it was crazy. It was weird. No, for sure, for sure. So you had one foot in, one foot out. Of game. course. The whole time I did. The whole time. And I ain't gonna lie, I always have been like that. But like this go round, you know, I'm hanging with Crim, Crim, me and Crim and I, we doing the Chronicles and all this stuff. Crim did the interview, he took me and money and them with him. We did the interview, I did the song with Crim on the Neighborhood Dope Man soundtrack called Big Crim. All this stuff going on. And so me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, you he was know, on the I'm dirty just, glove battle. Not to cut you off, so he's on the dirty. I knew, okay, 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 yeah, yep. he was on that too, yeah. Yep. yeah dirty glove bastard interview. Yep, that and uh, what's his name? Be uh, high, be high, be high. Yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. that too. Yeah, so y'all moving and shaking. Yep. But I mean, uh, go back to, I mean, not to cut you off. So around that yeah. time, yeah, he was like, yep. But it was just that uh, I didn't want to. I kept saying, you know, I'm older. This not my era. But my family would be sitting around saying, so okay, so you gonna let Crib keep working? You gotta work too. You can't expect for Crib to keep toting you on his back. And I was like, you right. So, and I, I know how Crib is. Crib is a hard worker. Squeaky is a hard worker too. And one thing about them, they'll throw a life preserver out there for you, but they like for you to try to swim too. So if you try to swim too, you help yourself, they just do even more to help you. Mm. So that's all it is.